Uh, in this video, we will discuss about uh, the multi-data source and along with the concept of cluster, high availability and failover. So in lecture one, okay, we have discussed about the data source, what exactly is the data source, how it works, how we can do the configurations in your project. Okay, now another entity uh, in uh, which is related with the data source is multi-data source. Okay, but before that, you have to understand the concept of cluster, load balancing, failure, rack, which is a concept of uh, database, which is called a real application cluster. Okay, so all these are, you can say, as a solution for high availability. Okay, so what does it mean, high availability? Okay, let us understand in a very basic way. Suppose that you have a host, a machine, where you have one admin server and one minor server is running and your applications are deployed on minor server one, okay? So what will happen in this case, your minor server goes down due to any reason, okay? You have only one machine and then one minor server is running and your applications are deployed on minor server one. If that minor server get crashed, your application will not be available, right? So what is the solution for that? For that, you create one more minor server, okay? So now you have a host, and then where you have two managed servers, and then you have deployed your application on minus one and minus server two. Okay, so that in case of any of your managed server get crashed due to any reason, your application will be available from the second managed server. Either your managed server one is get crashed, the application will be accessible from managed server two. And if your managed server two is crashed, then the application will be available on managed server one. So what will happen in that case where both managed server get crashed? So you can have multiple managed servers either three, four, five, and six based on your applications, right? So now, when we talk about, we have a two minus server, okay? So we can define them in a cluster. But the cluster is a logical entity in your logic server where you can create a cluster and then you can club all of your minus server in a particular cluster, okay? And one basic requirement for cluster is that your, all the minus server which you are making part of the cluster should run the same application, okay? Because that is going to be have a solution for high availability, okay? As I'm saying that if your minus server one get crashed, the application will be available from minus server two, okay? So in that case, it is mandatory, you have to deploy a same application, set of applications on your cluster. So now you have two minus server, both are in a cluster, right? So another benefit of cluster is session failure. Okay, now you have to understand two things. One is session, what exactly is a session, and the second is your failure. Okay, so for example, that if you are using uh, some uh, e-commerce website, okay, you are doing some shopping, and then you have added multiple items in your shopping cart. Okay, at that time, your session or your request, you can say your connection is connected to manage server one. You are doing a lot of stuff, you are searching the e-commerce portal, you are going through a lot of items, and then you have added 10 to 20 multiple items in your shopping cart, or maybe one or two stuff in your shopping cart, okay? And then, suppose that if you are connected with the backend server one and it gets crashed, so what will happen in that case? Your session will get crashed, okay, right? You will get a login screen again, okay? But this is not a practical scenario. What happens is that if we have two managed server in the backend, those are part of the cluster, and if you are doing any kind of a, a stuff on the e-commerce portal and your session is printed with minus server one and by chance it gets crashed due to any reason, okay, your complete session will get transferred or you can say to failure to minus server two along with the session data. So session is, you can say about the, your connection, suppose that you are accessing your website with the Echo browser and then you, and suppose you hit amazon.in, then when you hit the amazon.in, in, in your browser, okay, it connected with the website, okay, wherever the website is deployed to the service provider, or you can say about the Amazon.in server, okay. So that is the connection when you are uh, connected with the website, okay. But after that, when you are doing some work on your website, that is, and for example, as I said, you have a added multiple items in your shopping cart, so that is your session data, okay. And if your managed server is get crashed in the back end, your complete session data need to be failure to manage server two, okay? And that is called a session replication also, and we can say it is a session failure uh, process, okay? So where your complete session data along with your station will be transferred to manage server two. So now apart from uh, apart from clusters, we have now advanced, uh, more advanced software as well in place, okay? But this is not part of the session, okay? 
but here just you have to understand what exactly the meaning of session and what is the meaning of session failover and most importantly failover okay failover is that means if your server is get crashed to which your session is connected then your session is need to be replicated to the second available server now what is the scenario if your machine get crashed doesn't matter you have a n number of managed server running in a particular host or a machine if your machine is get crashed then your all the application will be down because your everything is down your many all the managed servers are crashed because your machine is crashed right so for that what you have to do is that you need a two machine two parallel machine right where we do the horizontal clustering where we have one managed server on machine one and then we have another managed server on machine two right and in that case if your any of your machine get crashed suppose you have a machine where your managed server one is running second managed server is running okay they crash then your application will be available from the managed server which is running on other host okay so this is the concept of your basic concept of your clustering and then you can say about session session failover and the concept of failover okay so now what is the solution when we talk about the data okay yeah, apart from the application okay for suppose that now again you have a host where you have two managed servers are running and you have configured one data source and which you have targeted to your managed server 1 and managed server 2 and then there is a database in the backend and your data source need to be connected with the database for the data connection now what will happen if your data source get crash you do any reasons okay so then with, that means uh, your application will not able to make any connection with the database so doesn't matter if we have a n number of managed servers are running but if the data source which is the only single point of contacting to your database it will crash your application will not work as expected functionality right so what is the option in that case you can have two data source right so in case if your one of your data source gets crash you should have another database available for the high availability purpose okay now when we talk about a data source high availability architecture suppose you have a machine where you have two managed servers are running okay so similarly in the back end you could have two database instantly okay for the high availability because if you have only one instance of database and it's a crash then again your application will not able to work right so you need a high availability at the database and as well so there could be two database instances where your application need to be connected or there could be four managed servers and there could be four database instances and, and it can go up to n number of uh, counts right based on the load in your application there could be 10 managed servers 20 managed servers and there could be 4 5 6 7 7 8 10 20 n number of database instances as well based on your application load right so what is the solution in that case if you have multiple managed servers are running and your application need to be connected with the multiple in second instances of database right which is called a real application cluster that means all the database instances are in a cluster just like we have a cluster in the web logic server there is a cluster in the in a database as well okay so you have a, in picture you have a four database instances so what happen in in, in this uh, kind of a clustering in database is that you have a different binaries on each host for example i have a four instances there for database that means i have a four machine and i have installed my database in all four machines but because my data is common okay it doesn't uh, mean that if i have a four server then they have a different storage for database as well because the data would be same right for your application so all four instances will share the same storage location that means data will be shared at a single location but the installation of the oracle database you can do on the different instances for that is for the high availability of your database okay so that is for a real application cluster and to connect your managed servers or your applications with the backend multiple instances of your data set uh, database you need a multi data source so what exactly is multi data source that means we have a multiple data sources inside a multi data source that means you would have a single multi data source and then you can create n number of data sources and then you can assign your all the data sources to your multi data source so now what will happen in that case instead of a one data source you have a multiple data source there right so for example in picture you can see that we, i have defined four data source inside my multi data source and i have back end uh, four database instances right so what will happen if any application will need a connection from a data source okay from a data okay the first request will be served by the database instance one 
for second database request, it will be served by data instance 2. Okay, there is a typo in the picture, it is the, the DB instance 2. Okay, and similarly, if you have a third request for your database request, then it will go to instance 3. If you have a fourth request, it will go to database instance 3. Okay, so this is the main purpose of your multi data source where you have a multiple instance of database in the back end and then to avoid any kind of a single point of a failure for your single data source you could have multiple data source defined inside your multi data source and then your all the data sources inside your multi data source can be able to correct with the multiple database instances in the back end okay so now this is the configuration of your uh, data source and the concept of multi data source which is a uh, you can say it's a grouping of different data sources okay now there are two uh, Algorithms you can say which we can define as a request distribution. So when the request comes to your multi data source, so how it get diverted to the multiple instances in the backend. So you have four instances in the backend. So there, you, there are two algorithms for distribution of your request load from your multi data source to the backend database instances. For example, if you uh, if your uh, application need a connection from the database, okay, and the first request came to your data multi data source. The request first will go to database instance one. Request two will go to database instance two. Request three will go to instance three, and request four will go to database instance four. Okay, it should be database instance four. That is type, right? So now again, for again, if another request comes, request five, it will go to again to database instance one. Then again, request six will go to instance two. Request seven will go to instance three, and then request eight will go to instance four. Similarly, the cyclic way it will go one by one or in a round robin session to all of the instances one by one as a request will arise. Okay, so this algorithm is called round robin algorithm. Okay, so when you will create a multi data source, it will ask you uh, <clears throat> for an option which algorithm you want for a data source. Okay, so this is a one of the generic algorithm that most of the time collected when we configure the multi data source as a round robin algorithm. Okay, so now apart from that, we have one more algorithm there. Okay, so how it works? Okay, for example, you have a four database instances in the backend, but you don't want all to be the part of the real time or, <clears throat> or a real time database instances. Okay, so you can define two any of the servers as a primary servers, and then the rest two you can define as a standby, which you can say as a failover as well. Right, so in that case. What happened is that you want is that your two database instances are the primary server instances. So your data source connections should go always to the primary server, which is database instance one and database instance two. So in case of any problem with your database instances, primary database instances, either they get crashed or maybe they are not performing well, they are not sending the response on time. So any kind of issue with your database instances one and two, which is in primary group, okay, at that time your session. Your database connection request from multi data source should go, or you can say, should fail over to your standby data. Okay, so one thing that you have to make sure that the failure of database connection doesn't work like the application failure where, where your complete request and data get fail over to the second managed server. Okay, because this is a TCP IP kind of a, a connection from your data source uh, to your database instance over the network. Okay, so in case your one connection session is connected with the database and then your database get crashed in the back end okay then it will not be handled by your multi data source if you want a, a, a connection kind of a failure okay connection database connection failure then that for that you have to make some certain kind of a configuration from the database level okay but from multi data source side if at any point of time your primary servers get crashed from the back end all the requests that will come to data multi data source now we'll go to your database instance three and database instance four, which is your standby. And now at that time, it will act as your primary database until and unless your primary server came up proper. Okay, this is the concept of your failure. Now we'll see that. Okay, so in case your primary server goes down, okay, then your request will go to your database instance three and four, and this is called failure algorithm. Okay, so when you will configure your data source, you will get a drop box with two more algorithms, either you have to set round robin or either you have to set failover algorithm. Okay, so what are the basic steps for configuring your multi data source? Collect your database instance detail from the DBA team. 
configure all required data sources pointing to all backend db rack instances that means if you are if we have maybe have four database rack instances the backend that create four data source one for each create multi data source and assign all data sources okay so now once your data sources are ready go again to your console create a multi data source and there you have to select all your four data sources and that will be part of your multi data source and then you have to select your the your algorithm either round robin or failure okay and your data source is ready now just see the screenshot i have two data sources with name two data source one and two data source two right and the target is the same manager server which is qa server one so now to configure a multi data source go to your services and then data sources so now you have to select new multi data source after that you have to give a name for your multi data source which you can give any name according to the applications scope you have to select global gndi name as i have discussed in my lecture one as well this is an important topic because this gndi is defined in your application and by referring to this gndi name your application connect with your data source and if you are defining a multi data source then you have to give a gndi name in the same way for your multi data source as well so now in your application instead of the one name of your gndi you will define the gndi no name of your multi data source so now your application will connect to the multi data source with the help of this gndi name and now because you have four multi four data sources running inside this multi data source so this will automatically take a connection from any of the data source according to the algorithm that you have selected right so now after that you have to select an algorithm either you wanted to have failover or or your load balancing then you have to give a target for your managed server and then you have to select the database drivers okay so to understand the drivers in more detail you have to go to my lecture one in data source okay so now because i have created both of my data sources as non exit driver okay so i have selected the non exit for my multi data source okay and then it will display at a, a drop box okay it will, it will show you the name of your data sources okay so make sure if you have created a data source in xa or non xa okay because you have created a data source in xa driver and if you are going to create a multi data source with non xa that it will not display here okay so now the select and then send it to the right side okay and then just click on finish okay so now your multi data source is ready which is having a uh, two data source here okay give data source one give data source two which is deployed on your qa server one and i would have two database instances in that in my case because i have two data sources okay so in case any request will come to my multi data source okay it can be served by the database instance one or either database instance two with the help of data source one or data source two which is now part of my multi data source so this is all about your multi data source and the concept of high availability and thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for few more interesting videos thank you very much